All right, hey. Um, I've decided to just start it from a checkpoint. I'm starting from... Oh, hold on. I don't know why I'm using this. Oh. Well, that's all this. Oh, wait. I'm starting from the last uh, rally point. Just because I don't feel like doing all that again. I really, really don't enjoy that segment sometimes. It just takes too damn long. I'll say it. Of course, this means that I don't get the fucking energy sword that I had. Which is a real ball ache. But, you know, it was that or replay the whole mission again. And, you know, maybe get the energy sword again. Or this. Uh, and I gotta be tactical too. Yeah, this mission's hard. Unless. It's kind of dorky that they named it Uppercut. Well, there go my squad. See, one of the things about uh, this mission that kind of, like, it makes it shoot itself in the foot almost. The, uh, the silencing that happens in, in space means that you can't really appreciate the sound design. And in some cases also can't really appreciate, like, three dimensions. Like, just, just listen. I mean, I know you are, because I haven't been speaking, so you haven't had anything to hit here. But, like, there's just so little going on, you know? And, like, it's a cool mission. I'm not saying it's not. I just... I don't know, man. Go that way. This is better. Yeah, I'll hunker down by these. Sucker. Wait, really? That blame. One might call it gay, in fact. Y'all, I had the biggest blast of nostalgia uh, two days ago. I was uh, installing Halo Reach. I picked up the multiplayer, and I got a huge, huge bust of nostalgia just all at once. I was playing Halo Reach. I had a bad connection. But when my team won, someone on the enemy team disconnected and said, you're all fucking gay. Dude, I lost my mind. I was like, I'm home. It was pretty sweet. You know, it's really lame that oh, Sprint is an ability. Like, just being able to hustle is just such an ability that should be in everything, you know? If it's a if it's a default action in D&D, &D, it should be in everything, you know? People run quickly. 
There goes my last buddy besides Hologram Coon. Oh, right, right, right. There's this fella. This is like one of the only uh, missions that he shows up in. There's a there's an engineer up there. I totally forgot. Um, I think it only shows up in this mission. Um, engineers already have a really really like weird history. Um, engineers are where is he? There he is. They're squid gas bag fellas. They are organic computers, and in Halo they possess the ability to power up your opponents. They essentially armor them. They give them overshield. Which is, you know, bad. But they're essentially non-combatants. They don't really attack you. Which is why there is a achievement in Halo ODST for not killing them. Even though it makes it way easier because not killing them is really fucking hard. Oh, please. Oh, Grace. Um, because, you know, killing them just makes the game easier because your enemies don't get shielded. Because, like, the elites having double shield is just offensive. Damn. You know, if I'd have heard of them, I could have been able to turn around, but space sucks. Haha, <laughs> because space is a vacuum. I'm a comedic genius. Eat my butt. Yeah, they're very, very interesting. Um, they're a race that uh, converted pretty easily. They are very neutral. That's another reason that they don't really fight. They're just like, oh, these are computers. Okay, yeah, we'll fix them. You know? That's all they really do. And so the Covenant is, like, needlessly mean to them just because they are. If I remember correctly. But the humans are willing to be like... Hey, it would be nice, you know? Cook up a deal. Yes. Yes. All right. Now I'm getting it. No. I'm running out of ammo on that anyway, so I'm going to need to switch pretty quick. Damn it! Oh, cool. I got a checkpoint up approximately four seconds after the last one, I think. What's a Mexican food? You know? I want a big plate of those really shitty refried beans that you get in a crappy Mexican restaurant. One bullet left. I guess I'll save that last one for myself, right? Excuse me, sir. I'll be right with you. Cool. I'm always curious as to what they're saying. I'm uh, something of an amateur conlanger myself. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but... Um, El Coon... Sorry. Elf Prince Alfred uh, is my new ex... XBLA nave. Uh, that's what my tattoo means because on my wrist is a tattoo of Tolkien Sindarin, which is what most people think of when they think of Elvish. It's just his uh, most complete Elvish language. Uh, I researched and designed the tattoo for me and my wife. Um, she has a different one that says something else. It's personal to her, so I'll let her say it if she feels like it. There you are. A blams. Six, go for those shield controls. I need in. Shut up. Sorry, George, not you. I know I said it to you, but I don't mean it. And then them Halo drums come in. Hey, if you haven't listened to the ODST soundtrack, do yourself a favor and go do so. It's jazz, dude. It's film noir. It's really cool. And now I'll shut up. Body 
Take it to forward, Colonel. Copy that. Six, get your fire team to the bridge. The Corvette's refueling run with the supercarrier will have to be initiated manually. Yes, sir. Five, stay with the bomb and discourage the curious. My pleasure. Hear that, Lieutenant? I'll be all by my lonesome back here. Make it quick, would you? He's the best. And uh, bring me your plate of nachos, will ya? I'm really hungry for Mexican food. Mexico probably exists, right? I forget which Gundam it is, but uh, it's one of the Gundams where it's a little less uh, serious. But like, there's a bunch of, well, we're already losing dudes. There's a bunch of different colonies in space and they're all just, you know, space whatever so like space germany and they're all like pseudo nazis and space america and they're just the unsc oh hello sir using that dangerous secret illegal technique of dual wielding no one could ever hope to accomplish it but there's a there's space mexico and their colony is just a giant sombrero in space it's kind of awe-inspiring Sometimes I love the way that Japanese writers are willing to just do that, you know? For those who don't uh, know, dual wielding is a thing that has been in the Halo games sometimes. Um, it was in Halo 2 and 3. You could do it as Master Chief. You cannot do it in ODST because the protagonist is not in ODST. Oh, I'm the coolest. Hell yeah. The hell was I talking about? ODST, right. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that you can do as a Spartan that ODSTs can't do, and so that's reflected in gameplay. In Reach, however, um, they decided to switch it back to how Halo 3 works, which is also why you have health which is uh, not a thing in 2 and 3, if I remember correctly. I mean, it is a thing, but you don't have, like, a separate bar for it. Like, you have a you have a few bits of, like, a bit more damage that you can take while your shield are down. It's not a lot. This is a zealot, I believe. Oh, boy. I'm over here. Guys, you're not really... I know not everyone's a Spartan. Damn it! Oh, well. People who say Dark Souls is hard don't know shit. Dark Souls is easy game. Oh, UNSC Super Chad Noble 3. Master Chief who? Cortana was like, ooh, he's lucky. He's like seven feet tall and he's lucky. Gotta get that albino penis. For the longest time, I was convinced that there was this official Halo anime wherein Master Chief took his helmet off and he was an albino anime boy. And to my surprise, there is. But not exactly like I thought. Uh, there's a Halo anime, yes. I know that's a wild sentence to hear. But there's a compilation movie animated by a couple different anime... Damn it! A couple different anime studios. Um, Production IG. <laughs> that hologram, though. Production IG is on there. Um, they did the new season of Fooly Cooly, I think. They are what happened to... Uh, the cool guys at Gynax who didn't go to form Trigger. Studio Trigger, that is. For those who don't know their anime lore, Gynax is an anime studio that split into a bunch of different ones. There's the original Gynax. There's now Gynax West. There's uh, Studio Trigger, which has Yu Yoshinari and 
the people that did all my favorite anime. Uh, that's why Gurren Lagann and Kill a Kill are so similar, if you know about those. Because they were made by, not the same company, but the same team, essentially. Cool. Um... Yeah, sure, I'll just hit the refuel button, I guess. Do I speak this? Yeah, it's probably fine. Anyway, Production ID, uh, IG did a bunch of the anime in there. I forget who else. But if I remember correctly, there's a scene wherein... I gotta watch... I gotta rewatch Halo Legends, especially now that I'm replaying the Halos. See, I love this. You gotta play dangerous because otherwise his shields will regenerate. And then your your progress is nothing. I want the DMR. Oh boy. Well, I wanted a good DMR. I'm working on it, George. No, that guy. Anyway, if I remember correctly, there's a anime boy, Spartan. There's actually a book as well where they des uh, where they describe. I think it's Chief Master Chief that is John one one seven. They describe him like taking off his armor and like replacing the parts of his Mjolnir. I think it's up to four or five at that point. Replacing pieces of the Mjolnir five gear that he's wearing with uh, other broken parts. He's just looted off his buddies. Because, you know, they're dead. They don't need it. And they describe him as being, like, milk white. Because he's just been in the armor so long that he's completely albino. He's gotten no sunlight on anything. And that combined with all the, like, chems in his body just make him completely lily white. Oh, man. <laughs> Though I think uh, Chief might be bald. Not an anime boy. If I remember, uh, I'll put Spartan anime boy at the end of this. No, I don't want this. At the end of this episode. <laughs> Let's just make it really shitty. Just no music. Just insert it like in the middle of everything. Good of you to come. All stars are pounding the hell out of Pelican. Sorry, I just hit you. My cat was trying to tear apart my blinds again. Beep. I didn't hit him. I poked him. What is this track? Boop, 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 boop. Yeah, I'll take one. What do these what do these guns come unloaded? Is the dude who just puts bullets and guns like on his lunch break? Is it because of famine? Because the I don't Because if it's because of famine that might make a little more sense, but the whole thing is that like those guns come with full ammo anyway. All right. I wonder if Robert watches my show. I don't know if he does, but if he does, Robert, play Halo Reach with me. Let's play Lasso together. That was pretty alpha. If I do say so myself. Oh, uh oh. Rut row. I wonder if Kate plays Halo Rage. 
I feel like most people should own Halo the Master Chief Collection. It's just... You know, I want to support that. I don't really like 343. Um, I feel like they're just kind of getting on Halo, even though they don't really always understand exactly why Halo was so great. Like, there's a, there's a, one of those excellent, like, long-form, pro well-produced YouTube documentaries where they talk about, um, like, the development of Halo 3 versus the development of Halo 4, and how, like, the dev team of Halo 3 spent so much time playing their own game that they were amazed that it got published, you know? Like, it was a dev team with an exceeding amount of passion for the project that they were working on. They were all fans of Halo. Like, either they were huge, huge fans of the storyline stuff that they'd done in the other games, or they were just people who had joined the dev team because they were fans of Halo. Not because Halo is popular, but just because they liked it. And they played so much of the campaign, because the campaign's fun. And they played so much of Deathmatch, because they were like, hell yeah. And so, like, playing Halo Deathmatch, Halo 3 Deathmatch specifically, against Bungie was an absolute walk of shame for most people because pretty much no one was better than Bungie at Halo 3. And yeah, that's what it should be. You should be good at the game you make. It's why I really want to see Miyazaki play Dark Souls. Dark Souls 1. You know, I want to see if he can really actually put his money where his mouth is. Oh boy. Oh man. Oh fuck. But yeah, compared to that, like, the Halo 4 devs are like, we really want to push Master Chief. We want to, we want to make Moo, you know? And it's, like, there's just, it's just, it's not that they're impassionate about it. Oops. Long gun. I want this one. It's not that they're like, yeah, whatever, Halo. You know, who cares? It's just Halo. They're, it's more that they are not approaching the same level of excitability. And if they are, it's for different reasons. And in some cases, not the reasons that the Halo 3 devs were. You know that the... Halo 3 team consumed a half, like, a half a ton of bananas over the development. That's not at all a joke. They literally ate half a ton of bananas. Sure, why not? Oh, that's a plasma launcher. That, uh, that isn't good. Hey, distract him. Nice. Ho ho, die trash. That's it? Great, dude. Um Yeah, they sent I I think the story goes they sent one of their interns to get food for the for the team. And the intern comes back with Oh my god, that was a brilliant move. Also, how did he survive? They send an intern to come back. Oh that checkpoint's really there, dude. Bruh. Uh, they sent an intern to go get food for the entire dev team. And they gave him, like, you know, money to buy a shitload of food for everyone. And they're like, yeah, just get a bunch of the ch whatever the cheapest thing is. And the dude comes back with a half ton of bananas over the course of the, like, thing. Because, like, bananas are cheap. They're healthy. You know, not going to kill you. They also ate, like, a couple thousand pizzas or something. And uh, I believe the final number was they consumed 24,000 gallons of soda. Someone later, like, followed up and they were like, yeah, soda and bananas were just for the everyday, you know? They gave you pizza and soda if you stayed around for crunch time. And that's dope. Hell yeah, Bungie. 
like Chad Bungie getting people pizza, you know? Like, when you were in school, the pizza party was that unattainable carrot always dangled above your head that, like, you could never attain this, you know? That is what unattainable means. Oh, and they got a war. I'm not trying to make a techno remix here. I'm just trying to pre-charge it. Jiminy Christmas. It's took a lot of hits. All right, oh, my old plasma rifle. Nice. Hey, it's pretty loaded too. There's a couple of them even. Savannah did a number on the door. There's no way back up to the Sabers. That was six. Form up on me. Mission probably ends here. How long have I been recording it? That doesn't feel very long. Yeah. Another 30 minute episode. That's okay. Distance is closing on this vessel's refueling track with a Covenant supercarrier. 76 seconds to wait, Hunt. So, it's gonna be like that. Well, I've got good news and bad news. This bird took some fire and I thrust the gimbal is toast, which means the only way off this slag heap is gravity. And the good news? That was the good news. At current velocity, 53 seconds to end Yeah, point. yeah, yeah. Bad news is, time is fried, and I'll have to fire it manually. That's a one-way trip. We all make it sooner or later. Better get going, Six. They're gonna need you down there. Listen. Reach has been good to me. The time has come to return the favor. Don't deny me this. Hell yeah. Tell him to make it count. Fuck yeah, George. So just as we blow up that ultra ship, like fifty more decloak. They were like, oh, okay, you took that down? Okay, well, we got to get reached, so. And hey, I'm going to pause it. Um, Exodus. Actually, no, I'll read the next episode. Um, I wanted to mention two things. One, uh, speaking of cool development teams, you guys know the new XCOM? Um the new XCOM, by that I mean the 2015, 2014 one. Uh, yeah, new. It's, uh... <laughs> the, the team were all fans of the original XCOM, and they'd all beaten it. But if they hadn't, they set out time every other Friday, I believe, for them to beat the original XCOM. Which, by the way, it's amazing that that game got released. Because if, if I had to beat the original XCOM before I could release a game, I don't think I could do it. At some point, I should really explain who the hell Anti-Dot is. 
Um, but yeah, that was uh, Long Night of Solace. And it's, you know, it's just, it's one of those games. It's like, oh, we finally made it, you know? We destroyed their thing. Oh, the Covenant has so many resources that they have just completely invalidated it. All right, well, we'll destroy the thing that invalidated our first victory. Oh, well, they have, they just invalidated that too. Uh, uh, let's go up there and let's, uh, let's invalidate that then. Uh, hey, it, it kind of got invalidated already, so I'm going to have to stay behind and sacrifice myself to invalidate, uh, their invalidation of their, of our victory of their invalidated victory. Okay, cool, fine. Heroic, radical. And George probably died knowing that, you know, probably died thinking that he was saving Reach. Uh... And then 50 more ships teleport in. <laughs> Fuck, dude. This game's a very classical tragedy, you know? It's something... I'm not trying to fill time, by the way. I really have points that I want to make. It's almost like Greek. Some Someone told me, uh, I believe it was Josh from the Continue Show when they were playing Lego Star Wars, actually. Uh, he told me that one way to view the Star Wars prequels is that you look at them almost like a Greek tragedy where the story is kind of generic and you already absolutely know what's going to happen bef before anything happens because, of course, Anakin Skywalker has to become Darth Vader. It's what the movies everyone already saw is about. Oh, excuse me. Hiccups. And so, like, th the only thing that you can really do is just, like, kind of lean back and revel in the pathos of seeing the fall of the galaxy's greatest empire and it's it's kind of what reaches you know like one of the one of the earlier halo books i believe is just called halo the fall of reach uh and like uh hmm i wonder what happens to reach guys and this game knows that like going in they show you the they show you reach pre-glassed and your character's helmet on there cuz your character's fucking dead. And like all right, let's back it up and see how we get there. And it's cool. It's a tale of heroism and never giving up even when there is no reason to keep going. Just on the off chance that maybe there is. It's something that um it reminds me of something a therapist told me once. Sometimes it's not that you want to live, you know, when you are really, really suicidal and it's really bad. Sometimes you just don't want to live and that's okay. Not wanting to live is okay. The thing that's important is that you have to be curious enough about the future. You know, you don't have to be excited for the future because fuck, I'm not excited for the future. My job's jumping up my ass because I'm still sick. Uh, and there's a quarantine and there's a fucking plague and i'm not particularly excited about the future you know i am for other reasons but not for that but i'm curious you know i'll stick it through <sighs> anyway so i've been sitting in this pause screen for long enough eating up enough of your time really breaking this what is this 30 minute mark yep there's 34 on the recording uh thanks for coming by and listening to me just kind of bitch about philosophy uh i've been alfred this has been halo reach thank you for coming hope to see you again i guess stay curious <laughs>